Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at part two of my G1 Transformers and Pre-Transformers collection series. If you're a fan of vintage Transformers, you're not going to want to miss this one. All right, we're gonna start off by taking a look at my top shelf here, which is where I display a number of different representations of G1 Optimus Prime. Starting on the bottom left corner, we have World's Smallest Transformers Optimus Prime. This was put out by Takara in 2001, and it's the anime accurate version. You could tell by the light blue windows on the cap. Next, we have the original Power Master Optimus Prime, which may not be as popular as the 1984 version of Prime, but it's still an excellent toy in its own right. Off to the side of him, we have a Kabaya model kit version of Power Master Optimus Prime, which scales really nicely with World's Smallest Transformers, and it's very cool because it's also fully transformable. Speaking of 1984 Optimus Prime, the one I have on display here is a very early version of it. It actually comes with bloated accessories, a gray roller, and it has metal plates on the inside of the trailer. These metal plates were replaced by stickers in later production runs of the figure. And last but definitely not least, we have what I refer to as the perfect edition of World's Smallest Optimus Prime. This is much more G1 accurate than the official Takara version. You can see it includes the repair bay in Optimus Prime's trailer, as well as some additional molded details in the trailer. Optimus Prime actually has tiny holes drilled in his fists, so he can actually hold his gun as opposed to having it snap over his wrist, like in the Takara version. They actually still sell these on eBay, and if you go to herotoysmaker.com, you could still buy them online. For anyone who's wondering about that record in the background, it's actually a fairly recent release. It's music from the original G1 cartoon. Mine's the Megatron version. A good friend of mine hooked me up with it a couple of months ago, and I'm very happy to have that in my collection now. Now we'll move along to my 1986 Transformers the Movie shelf. This has actually become one of my favorite displays. I really like all the different colors, and the designs that Hasbro used for the figures have really grown on me over the years. Starting at the front here, we've got Wheelie, and I've got him strategically placed underneath Na. Who knows, maybe we'll get lucky in the Sharkticon, we'll finish him off once and for all. Then on the right, we've got Springer, Hot Rod, and Sergeant Cup. And in behind them, we've got Ultra Magnus, who's pretty huge uh, when you have him on display in his battle armor. Then Rodimus Prime, with his trailer open, and he's in his battle station. Galvatron is in the back left corner. Underneath, we've got Scourge, and I'm hoping to get a couple of more Scourges, so that I can have a representation of the sweeps in my collection. And then we have Cyclonus with his comedically large head and pointy ears. And then down below here in the front, we've got Rekgar, uh, with the only non-G1 Transformer on this shelf riding him. That's the Titan's Return version of Wheelie, who's actually a pretty cool figure. Now we'll take a look at my G1 Headmaster shelf. Starting in the bottom right corner, we've got Weird Wolf, who for whatever reason was renamed Wolfwire in the Titans Return line. If Hasbro lost the rights to use the name, I never understood why they didn't just call him Decepticon Weird Wolf. Then we've got Mindwipe, and on the left we've got Brainstorm, who in the Titans Return line was a Walgreens exclusive. In the middle row, there's Highbrow. One of the two Decepticon triple changing Horrorcons. This one's Ape Face. And then on the right, we've got another figure that saw a name change in the Titans Return line. In G1, this was known as Skull Cruncher. In Titans Return, it was Skull Smasher. Either way, he's got some really cool colors. Back right corner, we've got Chrome Dome. Then in the middle, my favorite out of the two Horrorcons, that's Snapdragon. And last but not least, on the left here, we've got Hardhead. Most of these characters were released as deluxe size figures in the Titans Return line, but what I don't understand is why they made Ape Face a Legends class figure. The Titans Return line seemed like a perfect opportunity 
for all of these characters to see a deluxe sized release. The next shelf we're going to take a look at is my Insecticon shelf. Along the front row you can see I've got the deluxe sized Insecticons, which I really don't think get enough love. On the right we've got Barrage, Ransack, Venom, who I think has fantastic colors, and I love his translucent wings. And then on the right we've got Chop Shop. In the background, we've got the more popular Insecticons, and certainly the more recognizable ones, thanks to the G1 cartoon. On the left, we've got Kickback. Here's Shrapnel. And then on the right, we've got Bombshell. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Bombshell and Shrapnel were renamed in the more recent Hasbro reissue of the figures. I just don't have that particular set, so unfortunately, I don't know the new names that were given to them. If anyone's wondering what the boxed figure is in the background, it's the original version of the deluxe-sized Insecticon Chop Shop. Back in the 80s, when interest in Transformers was exploding, Hasbro didn't have enough figures to release at the time, so they ended up licensing figures from other toy companies, and that's how we got the deluxe Insecticons, Omega Supreme, and of course, Jetfire. Next, we have another pretty colorful shelf here. In the front row, we've got the throttle bots, starting from right to left, roll bar, chase, gold bug, searchlight, freeway, and wide load, which is a nice bright orange and blue. Next, we've got some G1 triple changers. On the left, that's broadside, blitzwing, Next we have Sandstorm, who I honestly don't think gets enough love from Transformers fans. That's a really great figure. Check it out if you're not familiar with it. And then of course Astro Train. In the back row we've got some world's smallest Transformers in very cool custom boxes. On the right we've got Megatron, who I did review not too long ago. Be sure to check it out and let me know what you think. And on the left we've got Ultra Magnus. Now, the front cab is actually the Takara version, but that trailer is put out by the company that I mentioned earlier that made the world's smallest Optimus Prime Perfect Edition. The company, again, is Hero Toys Maker. I can't say enough great things about this world's smallest version of Ultra Magnus. And last but not least, we'll take a look at my Target Master shelf. Starting in the bottom right corner, we've got Quake, who's a very cool figure. I actually really like the transformation on that one. I'll need to review it one of these days. Then Scoop, who was actually updated in the Generations line. I really regret not buying that one. That's actually a, a very cool figure that I'll have to get my hands on. And then Quick Mix here on the left. Looking at the middle row, we've got Hot Rod. Point blank with some serious 80s shoulder pads happening there. That figure is very wide. And Sergeant Cup. Now we'll move along to the back row. And on the right side, we've got Blur. Anybody who grew up in the 80s would remember that Blur was voiced by the same man who did the Micro Machines commercials and used to speak really quickly. So I always thought that that was pretty cool. Then we've got Cyclonus, and on the left side we've got Misfire with his Target Master. Now the one thing I should point out about Misfire is due to the design of the Target Master, it's been known to get some serious stress marks if you transform it. So my suggestion would be just leave it in whatever mode it comes in and don't transform that one at all. All right, well, that's it for part two of my G1 and pre-Transformers collection series. Be sure to like my video, leave me a comment, and subscribe for more. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Take care.